essentially, you know, brain fog is not a disease or a disorder or a diagnosis. Um, really, um, I like to think of it as a signal or, a, you know, a sign that something is amiss, maybe a bit like a cough, um, you know, uh, a persistent cough can signal that something is amiss and, and you need to kind of find out uh, what's going on underneath. So with brain fog, um, there's, it can be um, a symptom of an underlying health condition. <clears throat> and interestingly enough, um, many of those health conditions actually disproportionately affect women. So um, autoimmune diseases, things like lupus, um, Sjogren's, inflammatory diseases, um, a lot of chronic health conditions, actually, chronic pain, things like fibromyalgia. So I, we tend to use the word brain fog, but like actually a lot of these specific conditions, people have their own name for it. So with fibromyalgia, people call it fibro fog. Um, depression, <clears throat> excuse me, some cancers, um, neurological conditions. So multiple sclerosis is something that crosses autoimmune disease and neurological. So um, they'll often call it cog fog. Um, and actually, interestingly, it's often the thing that actually um, prevents people with MS from uh, continuing working rather than the mobility issues. It's 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 the cognitive function issues. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Viral illnesses. So it's, you know, um, it's not unusual to have brain fog for up to 12 months after something like sepsis bacterial illnesses. So it's not surprising at all, really, um, that it's happened after long COVID. And in fact, I wrote a piece for the Times back in 2020 for, for the Irish Times. And I did a special episode of my podcast interviewing people um, who were experiencing brain fog as early as May 2020. And actually they were being gaslit by their doctors, you know, and it was being blamed on other things rather than COVID itself. Um, but it's not surprising. Um, so yes, those underlying health conditions, then it can be the side effect of medication. And unfortunately it can be side effect of medic many of the medications used to treat those conditions. Um, so, um, and then again, I mean, really, I suppose any medication that works on the central nervous system system has the capacity to interfere with your cognitive functioning uh, in some way. So, um, you know, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications, um, pain medications, but also over-the-counter medications that you might not think about, such as um, antihistamines, anti-nausea medications. Then, of course, you have things like uh, chemotherapy. So, again, you may have heard of chemo brain, um, which would be another name, you know, really for the, the cognitive disturbances that fall under that term of, of, of brain fog. So um, then there are hormonal imbalances or hormonal fluctuations. Again, a lot of females, you know, so right across the lifespan, you'll have possibly heard of pregnancy brain, baby brain. Um, it's a big issue in menopause. One of the big reasons I wrote my book actually was because particularly because of their age, so many women in menopause experiencing cognitive issues and uh, you know, many of that age in menopause or even perimenopause are looking after aging parents who maybe have dementia and they're actually um, catastrophizing that what they're experience is, experiencing is early symptoms of dementia, um, which of course is entirely different to brain fog. Um, it's a progressive neurodegenerative disease, whereas brain fog is really, um, for the most part, a temporary disturbance with some sort of underlying um, causes. Um, and, I, you know, a lot of people aren't where I suppose when, um, and it, I'm talking about all sorts of hormones, obviously there's the, the, the reproductive hormones, that, but people aren't aware that you've, a lot of people in the general public aren't aware that you would have estrogen receptors in your, in your brain and in your hippocampus. So, you know, if they fluctuate or if they, they drop, they're going to impact on your, um, your, your cognitive functioning, but also we see it in something like, um, um, hyper or hypothyroidism, um, uh, you'll have, um, in fact, distinct uh, profile, different profiles of uh, brain fog, depending on whether you've too much or too little, um, you know, in, in, in thyroid um, uh, expression. Uh, and type 2 diabetes, um, you know, it's a big issue. So with insulin. Um, uh, 
so that would be the hormonal ones. And then you have dietary dis- deficiency or nutritional nutritional um, deficiencies or, or, or just even a poor diet. So something like vitamin B12 deficiency can impair your cognitive function so badly that it actually can mimic dementia. Um, um, an omega-3 deficiency, um, iron deficiency, folate deficiency, um, they can all impact on uh, brain function and bring about brain fog. And then um, sleep disturbances, and again, you see a lot of these will all interlink. And I think in, you know, in many ways, it's multiple factors together. So sleep disturbances, poor sleep, too little sleep and poor quality sleep or even disrupted sleep um, can um, bring about brain fog, uh, poorly managed chronic stress or actually even too little stress um, can uh, give rise to brain fog. Um, the too little stress, you know, can give rise to boredom, depression that can bring, bring about brain fog. Um, and then, um, uh, too little exercise, um, and, you know, insufficient mental stimulation, um, they'll all interfere with, with cognition.